Hi. So this lecture is on how science is a series of increasingly accurate approximations to nature. In this lecture, we'd like to give a basic overview of how science progresses. So a science is an iterative procedure of observing phenomena in nature, coming up with explanations of those phenomena, and then finding ways to test those explanations. The purpose of this lecture is to give a better understanding of how one explanation of some natural phenomenon gives way to improved explanations over time. So let's start by taking a look at the scientific method. So the scientific method is an iterative process of forming hypotheses and then finding ways to test those hypotheses experimentally. So let's say that we see some phenomenon in nature that we'd like to explain. We come up with ideas of how to explain that phenomenon, and then we also test those ideas uh, with experiments. Let's say that we have an idea that passes our initial tests. What do we do? Well, we do more experimental tests. In fact, let's say that we have an idea that works for quite a while, and it passes a bunch of experimental tests. So, we do even better tests. And let's say that then, our idea fails an experimental test. Well, at that point, we come back to the beginning. We have to come up with new ideas and test those ideas with experiments. Now, when our old idea is proven wrong, we need to come up with a new idea, but we don't necessarily start over from scratch. Now, I should say sometimes we do. So sometimes the old idea just disagreed so badly with observation that it's not useful. But if the old idea passed a lot of experimental tests, it's probably not too far off, even if it's not exactly right. Also, when we come up with that new idea, that new idea has to pass all of the same tests that the old idea passed, plus it has to pass the test that the old idea failed. So we often want the new idea to predict a range of results very close to those of the old idea. In particular, sometimes the old idea is an approximation to reality, and there is a range of circumstances where that approximation is very good, but the new experiments went outside of that range. In cases like that, we want the new idea to predict results very close to those of the old idea in the old idea's range of validity, but we still want the new idea to agree with the new set of experimental results. So, in cases like this, maybe we shouldn't illustrate the scientific method as a circle where, when we have an idea that fails an experimental test, we have to start over. Perhaps instead, we should illustrate the scientific method as a spiral, where we have a series of ideas that iteratively get closer to the truth. In these cases, what we call a revolution in science quite possibly means going from one part of the spiral to another part of the spiral. Now, this isn't to say that each new idea is a small change on the old idea. Sometimes the new ideas look absolutely nothing like the old ones. This is definitely true in physics, where Newtonian mechanics gave way to special relativity, classical mechanics gave way to quantum mechanics, and Newtonian gravity gave way to general relativity. In each of these cases, the old idea was replaced with a new idea that was completely different. It also doesn't mean that scientific advances only require small advances in technology. In fact, often the experimental technology needed to tell the difference between the old and the new ideas has to be completely revolutionary. What it means is that in these cases, the observable differences between the old and new ideas were small. Or in other words, the predictions of the old and new ideas were very similar. And in a way, this makes sense. If it was easy to see that the old idea was wrong, we would have gotten rid of it a long time ago. So let's illustrate this with each of the examples listed a few slides back, uh, special in general relativity and quantum mechanics. So except in extraordinary circumstances, the predictions of each of these ideas are very similar to those of the ideas they replaced. To observe their predictions, you need either extremely precise measurements, or you need to be looking at things going near the speed of light in the case of special relativity, things with very small sizes in the case of quantum mechanics, or things in gravitational fields that are much stronger than that on the surface of the Earth in the case of general relativity. None of these situations occur in ordinary life, so the effects of the deeper theories were very hard to see. That's why classical Newtonian mechanics and gravitation survived as theories for so long. In everyday scenarios, 
all of these theories reduce to their predecessors. So if you take special relativity at slow speeds, it reduces to Newtonian mechanics. If you take quantum mechanics at large scales, it reduces to classical mechanics. And if you take general relativity with weak gravitational fields, it reduces to Newtonian gravity. So the old ideas were very good approximations within certain ranges of validity. And for everyday problems, the old ideas are still very useful, and they're much easier to use than the new ideas. You know, you don't need quantum mechanics or special or general relativity in order to fix a car engine. So this is why we still teach Newtonian mechanics in school, even though on a deep level it isn't right. The important thing is to be able to use an approximation appropriate for the situation at hand, which requires knowing the range of validity of that approximation. Instead of just knowing a model, we also need to know how that model might fail. Now, for scientists, knowing the range of validity of a model is very closely related to knowing how well that model has been tested, and it requires a deep understanding of experimental and theoretical uncertainties. In fact, this is how relativity and quantum mechanics have been confirmed. Experiments eventually got very, very precise, so precise that they were able to distinguish between the new ideas and the old ones. So, to summarize, science is a series of increasingly accurate approximations to the truth. When we have an advance in science, often it does not overthrow all of the stuff that we knew before. Instead, it reveals a deeper idea, but the old ideas are still very useful in their own ranges of validity.